when I get a new Mac computer, there are some things that I always change to get a more efficient Mac that is easier and faster to work with. The first thing I always do when I get a new Mac, that is to go into my system settings and then I'm gonna check if there is any software updates for the Mac OS, because even if you get a brand new Mac, I have hardly ever experienced that it's updated to the latest Mac OS. So the first thing we're gonna change now after the Mac OS is updated to the latest version, that is to change how we navigate in the computer and we're using the trackpad, but the trackpad setting when you get this brand new is completely useless. So to change that, we go into system settings again, we're gonna scroll down to trackpad and then we're gonna take the trackpad speed and this is so slow. So I usually change that one to the one that is just above the middle because they don't have a middle. They didn't think a middle is a good way to go. So you have to do a little bit slower, a little bit fast. And this is a lot better so I can reach the entire screen without stretching my mouse outside the trackpad. The next thing we're gonna change is that by standard you have to click, make a real click on a trackpad to be able to do things like if I would like to change here, you have to click all the way down to be able to change. You can do this, it's enough to just to tap things like this, but that is not enabled by default. So to do that, we change that down here, tap to click. And by enabling that one, I can just tap and we are changing things. And I really prefer this. For example, if you are in a very quiet environment, you can click without clicking, you can just tap instead. The next thing I always turn off that is a swipe between pages. And that is done by using just two fingers and swipe. And by mistake, you're suddenly swiping between windows and pages and it's super, super annoying. So I always take that one and turn that off. So now with the trackpad set up, now we're gonna go to the keyboard settings instead. And one of the most annoying things here is that if I'm gonna type something and I, for example, have hold the backspace, it takes forever for the computer to erase whatever it is. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. So let's write something here. And if you hold backspace, it takes so freaking long to erase that. But if we go in here to keyboard and repeat key and we set that one to fast instead, and we're gonna type the same thing and we hold backspace, it goes so much faster. So that is a super handy thing. The next thing we're gonna do that is to go into the display settings. Personally, I like to have a lots of space real estate on my MacBook screen. And I think everything is a little bit too big and I would like to fit more. So I always go in here and change the resolution to more space. And then we suddenly get a lot more space. Things are getting a little bit smaller, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna get used to it if you haven't used it before. If it happens to be too small for your eyes, just go back to default instead. But I prefer to have more space. And then if you go into, for example, the web browser, and then you go to Apple, for example, and then we're gonna take a look here and you think everything is too small, then you can just take Command and Plus to make it larger and Command minus to make it smaller. So even if you have selected this to get more space, you can still enlarge the web pages, for example, super easy by using command plus or minus. The next super annoying thing that I like to turn off one of the first things I do, that is the automatic brightness adjustment of the screen. So what happens by default is that if the light environment changes in here, it gets a lot brighter, then it brightens up the monitor again. And if it gets dark, it darkens the screen. It sounds like it could be a good idea, but I hate when the brightness of the screen is changing by itself. I prefer to adjust that by myself with just F1 and F2, where you change the brightness of the screen. So turn off the automatic brightness adjustment. We just take this automatic adjust brightness and turn that off and you can just adjust the brightness of the screen all by yourself instead. After we adjusted the screen, let's go down to the dock instead. And here I would like to adjust the size of the dock because I think it's way too big. And then we can adjust that here. We can also adjust that by going down here to this little line, you click once and then just drag up and down. And then it's also gonna adjust the size of the dock bar. The next thing I wanna do that is to automatically hide a dock because when I'm not using it, I don't wanna be disturbed by it because when I usually edit videos and do photo editing and stuff, I don't wanna have that big freaking dock to disturb my workflow. So just turn that on here and the dock is gonna disappear whenever you're not using it. The next thing I would like to do with the dock that is to enable minimize windows into the applications icon because if we are not doing that and we open, for example, at Safari, and then we, let's enable this one again so you can see what's going on here. And then if I minimize this one, let's go to Apple again. And then we minimize that one here, it goes down here. And then if I have another one, for example, if I have one more here and I minimize that one, that goes down there too. 
and then the other one goes down and creates a new one and it's gonna just fill up your dock and that is super annoying. So instead, if we enable that one here, minimize windows into application icon, those ones are gonna be minimized into the Safari icon instead. So when I do minimize on that one, it goes down here. So we're not filling up the dock with things that we don't wanna have there. So then we just have it here. I can just double tap with two fingers. I can see whatever pages and windows I have open in that application that I have down here. So that is a lot better way to navigate. And while we're down here in the dock, there is one more thing I usually do. That is to go down here in the downloads folder. I always change that one to folder instead of stack. And then I would like to have my application folder down here as well because you can't access your application folder here and I think that is the fastest way to open programs. So I go into Finder and in Finder we go to Applications and then I can just take Applications and I click and hold and I just drag that one down here and I put it down here. And suddenly we have the application folder here. And I like to have the same design on these two here so I just click with two fingers and then I take Folder and they look the same and I think that is a lot prettier. The next thing I do, that is to always clean up all the apps that I'm not using frequently. So here, for example, the launch pad I'm not using, remove from dock. I'm not using maps here. So we take remove from dock. And I'm gonna show you a super easy way to access all of these things later. So now we have cleaned up the dock and this is what I have left here. So now I can access the frequently used apps here. I have my applications folder here and I have a third way to access my applications as well. And I'm gonna show you that later into this video because that has to do with another feature as well. The next thing I do in the dock that is to turn off suggested and recent apps in dock because if we have that enabled, they are gonna show up down here to the right and it's super annoying to have apps there that you don't wanna have it. So to keep control over what things gonna show up in the dock, I'm gonna turn that one off. So the next thing I'm gonna do that is when I go into touch ID and passwords and here because I have an Apple Watch, I like to enable. So when I have my Apple Watch on my wrist and I'm close to my computer, the computer is automatically going to be unlocked. So I enable that one and they're going to make it super easy and quick to work on a Mac and I'm not even going to need to use my Touch ID to unlock the Mac. If you are scared that someone is going to use your computer, even if you're just nearby, don't turn this on. But personally, I have this turned on and then if I'm in one of those situations, I'm just going to turn this off. After that, we're going to go into lock screen and here I would like to change the turn displays off on battery when inactive and two minutes is way too short. It's just gonna dim the screen directly. So I always change that one to five minutes. I think that is a lot better timer. After that, we're gonna go to the battery setting. Then after that, we're gonna scroll down to options. And here we're gonna turn off the slightly dim the display on battery. What's gonna happen is that when you have the computer plugged into the charger and then you unplug it, then it just dims down the screen. But again, I would like to control the brightness of the screen manually because what's happening when I have this turned on is just that the screen is gonna dim down and then I have to take it up a notch with the button again. So I just prefer to have this one turned off because I would like to be in control over my computer. I would like to have my battery icon here showing how many percent I've left in the battery. I can see that here, but it's very inconvenient to go into these settings. So I would like to see that up here. What you need to do then is to go into the control center. Then you need to scroll down to battery. And here you can select and turn on show percentage. And now we can see how many percentages I have left on the battery. After this setting is done, we're gonna go to the appearance setting. And here I would like to set the appearance to auto with auto it's going to change the color scheme of the computer and all the windows and everything when it gets dark and then it's going to change it to brighter color whenever it gets daylight again and yeah, I just like to have that change whenever we get into the evening of the day and we automatically going to get a different color scheme of my windows and when we are talking about the appearance let's look at what the clock looks like so then we have to go back to the control center again we're going to scroll down to clock and here we have clock options and here we can for example have if we like to show the date or not if we like to show what kind of day it is of the week up to the right corner here and here we can change if we even would like to have an analog clock instead of a digital I've never seen anyone using the analog but you can change that and a little bit more settings right here the next thing I would like to do to clean up the menu bar up here that is to disable and remove the spotlight 
I don't want to show the spotlight up here because I don't want to have more things there than necessary. And the spotlight I actually always use by click command and space because then I get the spotlight. And I think that is a lot faster to just click command and space instead of going up with a mouse cursor here up to the right and then enable the sport search. Did you know that you can use the spotlight for so much more than just open programs? Sure, you can use it to open, for example, pages and you can see that we have pages here, but you can also use it as a calculator like three times four minus three. And you can even have it to know how much, for example, 245 US dollars is in Swedish crowns, but I can instead have US dollars to euro and then I can see that it's 227 euros. And the spotlight feature is something that I'm using so much every day and I'm gonna access it again by clicking command and hit the space and do it again to remove it. Or you can just hit it and then take escape and you're gonna remove it as well. When we are talking about the search feature, let's fix that as well. So let's go into Siri and spotlight search. So what we can do here is, for example, that we go down here and see what's gonna show up in the search results. And I, for example, don't wanna have definitions in the search results. I don't wanna have events and reminders. I don't wanna see movies or music showing up in this search result either. And I don't wanna have tips. And then I also would like to remove the series suggestions. So here you can customize a lot, whatever things you would like to show up as a search result when you're using the spotlight search. The next thing we're gonna do that is to go into wallet and Apple Pay. And I use Apple Pay a lot when it comes to buy things from my computer. But here, if you have added more than one card, this is where you're gonna set the default card that is gonna be used by Apple Pay. So I'm gonna change that one because I would like to use my other one as my default check the shipping address as well so you know that that is corresponding to your real address and my email I would like to change that one to the email that I would like to use. One more thing that we're going to do here when we are into these wallets and Apple Pay that is to enable notifications for your credit cards so whenever there is a transaction you're going to get a notification that the transaction has been made so it kind of adds just another security level so you know what has been charged to your card so you just go into the card and then you go down here where it says transaction and you're gonna enable show transaction notifications. And when you have enabled that, you're gonna get a notification to your computer and I get it also to my phone whenever that has been charged to the card. So now we are done with all the changes I always do in the settings of the Mac computer. The next thing I so often do that is to take screenshots. And you can easily take a screenshot by hitting Command, Shift and four, for example, then you get in this little cursor and then you just can click and drag and you're gonna take a screenshot of whatever you have inside there you can have command shift and three then you take a screenshot of the entire screen and then to do more with the screenshot just hit command space screenshot and you open that up and here you can set for example that you would like to record a screen as well I'm doing that right now so I'm not getting those options here instead I have an option to stop the recording but if you are not doing a current screen recording then you're gonna have an option here if you would like to record the entire screen or just a frame one thing that I want to change here that is to go to options then I'm gonna go to other locations and here I'm gonna select downloads and choose so now all my screenshots is gonna end up in my downloads folder instead of on my desktop. Another thing that we have to fix when it comes to downloads, that is when you're downloading things from Safari. So when you go to Safari and you download anything, what's gonna happen is that that downloaded file is automatically gonna be opened up. And that is super annoying. For example, if you download an audio file, that audio file is automatically gonna be opened up in Apple Music. And that is so freaking annoying. So to change that and fix that, we go and we open up Safari, we go to the Safari settings, and then we go to general. And here at the bottom where we have open safe files after downloading, we're just gonna uncheck that one and the files are no longer gonna be automatically opened up. After we have disabled that, we can just make sure that downloaded files are gonna end up in the downloads folder. And then another thing that happens now and then is that cookies that are stored in the computer, in the browser, 
gonna cause issues with different web pages. I run a couple of web shops and when I do things there, the cookies can create a real issue and it's kind of troublesome to clean out the cookies, but there is a trick to clean out those faster. Let's go to advanced and then we're gonna show features for web developers. And when we have enabled that, if we take a look here up in the menu bar here, when we have that turned off, we're gonna see this. If we enable that one, we're gonna get develop up here. And when we click develop, we also have empty caches. So that is a super handy way to be able to clear out the caches you have in the browser so things are gonna start work properly again. So let's go to app layer again. When we open up one browser window, we don't have any tabs, but if I click command T to get another tab, I suddenly get the tabs here. The thing is that when you have like this, when you have the tab, you can pull the tab and create a new window. And when we have it like this, I can't really pull this here because I don't have any tabs. Here we have one tab left, so I can pull that one and put it here. And I can pull that one and put here, but the new one doesn't have a tab. So I would like to always have tabs so I can pull and arrange my screens and windows the way I wanted to. So to fix that, we click and enable Safari. So we get Safari up here. We go to view and we're gonna have always show tab bar. And when we have enabled that, if we now open up a new tab, we're gonna see that we have the tab here directly. If we now go into Apple, we're gonna have that tab here and we can easily take that one and drag somewhere else. And if we have another window, we can super easy just take that one and drag it here instead. So now we are done with the settings in Safari. The next thing we're gonna do that is to fix the settings in messages because I love to be able to handle my messages in the computer. Many people don't like that, but I do. So what I do is that I go into messages and settings. So then I'm gonna go into messages tab and here I'm gonna make sure that uh, you can be reached for messages at that I have enabled my phone number because I would like to receive messages through my phone number and also my Apple account email that I have here as well. Here's a third email address where I don't wanna be reached, so I'm gonna uncheck that one. Start new conversations from, I would like to have that to be started from my phone number when I send a new message to someone instead of from my email, because that is just weird to have it started from my email, so I have my phone number selected. And here I also like to enable send read receipts because then people can see when I've read their messages. What I also prefer to do here, that is to enable messages in iCloud because when I have enabled that one, I'm gonna get all my old messages synced in my, to my computer so I don't need to go back to my phone to look for a message because that is what's happening if you haven't this enabled because if it's not enabled, you're just gonna get all the new conversations synced into your computer and not the old one. And when you have this enabled and it's sent, received and also deleted messages, it's gonna be synchronized between your units. If you delete a message on your computer, that one is gonna be deleted also from your phone and I think that is super handy. And and then we can go back to general here again and here keep messages. This is where you can select, for example, if you want them to be deleted after 30 days, one year, or if you would like to keep them forever. I usually have that set to keep forever. And then if I run out of space in my iCloud storage, then I can go in and check whatever messages are consuming the most amount of storage. And then I can just delete those attachments. If you have filled up the memory, then you can just go up to your Apple ID here at the top and then and you can click the iCloud. And here in the iCloud, you can see how you have consumed the iCloud storage. Here I can see, for example, that I have 723 gigabytes of photos and videos, and I have 1.33 terabytes free. And here you can, for example, turn off if you don't wanna have photos stored in the iCloud library, but I prefer to have that. We also have to know that things are not 100% secure in iCloud. For example, we have recently got this advanced data protection feature. And if we go in here, we can actually turn this advanced data protection on. And before you do that, so currently Apple does have a key so you can with help from Apple, unlock things if you have forgot how to log in. If you enable this one, they will never be able to help you out. What's always encrypted end to end, that is what says down here, some sensitive data such as your saved passwords and data from health and maps are already protected using end to end encryption. But you can turn that on here to also get end to end encryption for device backups, messages, iCloud drive, notes, photos, etc., etc. Personally, 
the service that I use to be secure when it comes to my work emails, when it used to my secure storage, when it comes to the VPN service that I'm using, I'm using Proton. And I've dropped a link and affiliate link to Proton if you would like to check that out and try it as well in the description box and comment box, because that is the securest storage and email solution that I found and I'm super happy with it. So that's why I recommend it. The next thing we're gonna do that is to see each other in one of those two videos, the top one, that is the latest video I've uploaded and the bottom one, that is a video that YouTube recommended to watch next. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something. See you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.